Hey guys, this is the final video of a long project series for The Spectacular Spider-Man. You can check out all my other videos about this show. This whole project has taken me a considerable amount of time. It's taken me so long to get where I am today. And I am excited for the future, which I'll talk more at the end of the video. But if you're wondering why there's nothing pertaining to the future of this show on here, it's because I already have my Spectacular Spider-Man Future Points Iceberg I released a while back, and not many people actually watched it. So I would recommend checking that out if you haven't. But anyway, let's get right at this iceberg. Hope you all enjoy. Tier 1 Spectacular. Earth number. The Earth number for the Spectacular Spider-Man is said to be Earth 26,496, and this is in its own self-contained universe, with only one show being present for this universe. And there is no other heroes in this universe besides Spider-Man, even though that wasn't the original intention. Mentions in 616. Kong in the 616 universe was in the Starbrand and Nightmask comics, which Greg Wiseman actually wrote and he had his jacket from the show, so that's just a nice little detail. The only other piece of Spectacular Spider-Man kind of cameo is in 616 in an alternate timeline. There is a younger version of Peter who is wearing his Spectacular Spider-Man clothes, and an older period that is wearing his Spider-Man the Animated Series clothes. From what I know, these are the only two cameos in the 616 continuity. Intro Breakdown I did say I would do an intro breakdown just for completion purposes, and some people were asking in the comments if I would still do one, and I don't think I needed to make a full video on it because there's not actually much to go over, so I'll just mention my findings here. They have the Amazing Fantasy 15 pose in the newspaper shown, and all the other newspapers read the same exact thing as they do in the show too. It shows him getting bit by the spider, which is also shown in the Raimi trilogy and two times in the actual show. This shot is actually used in the show. The people here are Greg Wiseman, Victor Cook, and Mike Vogel. The footage from the background here is taken from the first episode when he's chasing Vulture. This shot is taken from the finale of episode 13 where Spider-Man is stopping the thugs. This is taken from episode 1. This is taken from episode 2. This is taken from the Friend or Foe video game Spectacular Spider-Man trailer. It then goes through the characters and this changes depending on the episode. So if they have a more prominent role in this episode, they will appear in the intro. So for example, episode 11 had MJ and Eddie's little B-plot, so she's introduced in the intro. They also changed Gwen's design by the end of the show, and this is also change in the intro. These little episodes in the web are only taken from some of the first episodes of season one, mostly in the first episode, and then they also add some of the friend or foe trailer scenes in there as well. That's everything there is to break down the intro. It's a great intro, and yeah, that's it. Same day. Mars 388 had pointed out that the Rhino and the Green Goblet episode take place on the same day, and I just thought that was really cool because it feels like another day had passed. It's crazy how much happened that day when you think about it. He beats the Rhino and the Green Goblet on the same day while also meeting Tombstone and fighting him. He also had his Fall Formal and so many things went down in the Fall Formal. He met Mary Jane there too. It's just such a big day and he got his ass kicked a lot that day. I'm surprised he even still went to the Fall Formal. <laughs> Tier 2, The Joke's On You, Lizard Episode. The Lizard episode was actually inspired by The Amazing Spider-Man number 45, and I don't actually see that many similarities. Spider-Man tries looking for the lizard until eventually he figures out where he's going to be, which is near a train that has alligators in it, and obviously beats him up, and he gets cured, and his arm is injured, which is somewhat similar to him injuring his hand, I, I guess. I don't know, I don't see many similarities, but apparently it was inspiration. Web Shooters. There actually is different settings on the Web Shooters, and that's most likely why Eddie was able to break that webbing in that one episode, which I will never let go, because why would he want to make his web strength that low? It just did not make sense. But yeah, he can either set them out as streams or as a net, and this is the reason why he can do that. This is also taken from the comics, and he can do a lot of other stuff with it, just like in the show. So very cool how they really put the attention to detail in there. Greg did his best. A fan had asked a question on their Ask Greg archives that said, Hey Greg, if you could do your own personal take on the Spider-Man Mythos as a TV series, not like Spectacular, I mean a wholly original concept but from scratch, what would it be like? With new origins for the villains and all that. Greg responded by saying, sorry, but I've done that and that is Spectacular. I'm not looking to reemit the wheel with an existing property, I'm looking to do the best version of that property that I can manage. So it's very clear he loves the work he did on the show and wouldn't want to try again just because of how amazing his ideas for these characters already were. He also mentions in another post that Spectacular Spider-Man was a joy to work on and it seemed to come easy and he still misses it. I would love if he would show us a script for the possible future seasons of the show one day because it would be a shame for a lot of those ideas to go unsaid if the show is never able to come back in some capacity. Voice actors. The talent on the show is absolutely phenomenal and you most likely heard them in other things before but just might not have noticed. I'm going to do a small rundown of what roles each of them have played. I won't be mentioning all the roles they played just because that would be dragging on and on. Clancy Brown who played Rhino and Captain Stacy had voiced Mr. Krabs from Spongebob, 
Damian Darkblood from Invincible, and Lex Luthor from the DC Animated Universe. Darius Norris, who played Jonah and his son, also voiced Timmy's dad in Cosmo from The Fairly Odd Parents, and also voices a ton of voices in the original two Spider-Man video games. Venom, Mysterio, Scorpion, Punisher, Human Torch, Captain America, Shocker, Sandman, Beetle, and Professor X. Which is crazy, I guess they couldn't afford too many other voice actors, I have no clue. James Arnold Taylor, who played Harry in Frederick Fazzo, also voiced Spider-Man in the Friend of a Video Game, and in Lego Marvel Superheroes. He voices Johnny Tess, the Flash from Young Justice, and Leonardo from the 2012 TNMT show. Lacey Chamber, who played Gwen Stacy, also voiced Meg from Family Guy, but just in the first season, Zatanna from Young Justice, how did I not notice that? And she also voices her in Justice League Action and the Injustice video game. She was also Supergirl in the Harley Quinn show. Vanessa Marshall, who played Mary Jane and Flash's mom, also voiced Black Canary from Young Justice, Black Widow from Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and Wonder Woman in the Harley Quinn show. Peter McNichol, who played Dr. Octopus, also voiced Professor Ivo in the Amazo and Young Justice, the Mad Hatter in the Arkham games, and Kronos in Justice League Unlimited. Trisha Heller, who played Black Cat, also voiced Black Cat in Web of Shadows. How did I not notice that again? That is insane. She also voiced Sonya Blade in Mortal Kombat X. Xander Berkeley, who played Mysterio, has some voices in Gargoyles. He was Captain Adam in the Superman and Batman Public Enemies movie, and he was also Gregory from The Walking Dead. Kevin Michael Richardson, who played Tombstone and Coach Smith, also voiced Jon Stewart, Martian Manhunter, and Dr. Fate and Young Justice, Juggernaut and Ultimate Spider-Man, and Shredder from the 2012 TNMT show. I also wanted to mention this because I thought it was funny. He also voices Happy Birthday from that one regular show episode. I just think that's really funny. Eric Lopez, who played Molten Plan, also voiced Boo Beetle and the Scarab from Young Justice, and he has some more roles in other things. Gray Delise, who played Tabby Arrow and Betty Brant, has a massive amount of roles, and I'm just going to pick the most notable for me. So she voices Shrinking Ray, Monster Girl, and Adam Eve's mom in Invincible, Daphne from Scooby Doo, a lot. Vicky from The Fairly Odd Parents, Azula from Avatar The Last Airbender, Catwoman from The Arkham Games, Sam from Danny Phantom, and Mandy from Billy and Mandy. Crispin Freeman, who played Electro, also voices Mysterio and Spot in the 2017 Spider-Man series, Arsenal, Red Arrow, and Guardian in Young Justice. He was Scott Lang, Ant-Man, and Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and then he was also Iron Man in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. Robert England, who played Vulture, also voiced the popular horror character Freddy Krueger, Anti-Pops in Regular Show, and Scarecrow in Injustice 2. Jeff Bennett, who played Shocker in Mr. Devereux, also voiced Brooklyn from Gargoyles, Azimuth from Ben 10 Alien Force, Ultimate Alien, and Omniverse, and also Red Tornado and Young Justice. D. Bradley Baker, who played Dr. Connors, also voiced Perry the Platypus from Phidias and Ferb, Offhand Momo from Avatar The Last Airbender, Squilliam from SpongeBob, Mr. Fantastic from Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes and Lego Marvel Superheroes, and then he also voices Stinkfly, Wild Mutt, and Eye Guy in the original Ben 10 series. Steve Bloom, who played Chameleon, Blackie Jackson, and Green Goblin, also voiced the Goblin in Ultimate Alliance 3, which I actually did not know. He is well known to play Wolverine in a bunch of different things. Ghost Freak, Heat Blast, and Vilgax in the original Ben 10 series. Count Vertigo in Young Justice, Ares in God of War, Hobgoblin and Vulture in Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, Anti-Venom in Spider-Man Edge of Time, Dr. Connors in the Amazing Spider-Man game, Kraven the Hunter in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 game. That's crazy that he played the main villain for those two games. Killer Croc in the Arkham games, Sub-Zero and Baraka in Mortal Kombat 11, and then he plays Tank Dempsey in Cobb Zombies. And by the way, I'm a huge Cobb Zombies fan. I'm just telling you right now. Bill Fag... Fag... Fagabargi... Bill Baggerfi... Fagerbacki... Bill Fagerbacki... I don't know if I... I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. <laughs> He voiced Morris Benz in the show and also played Patrick Starr from Spongebob, Broadway from Gargoyles, and Big Bear from Young Justice. Kelly Hu, who played Sean Sean, also played Karai in the 2012 show, Cheshire in Young Justice, and Stacey Rano in Phineas and Ferb. Brian George, who played Aaron Warren and Miles Warren, also played the Guru from Avatar The Last Airbender, Shocker and Adrian Toomes in the Ultimate Spider-Man video game, and Alfred in some of the Batman movies. Thomas Wilson, who voiced Stan Carter, also played Biff from the Back to the Future movies. That surprised the... <laughs> that just that just surprised me so freaking much. Like, I hear it now, but, like, that was crazy. The Strangler from Spongebob, Sandman from Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, and Electro in Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Phil Lamar, who voiced Robbie Robertson, Randy Robertson, and Ricochet, also played Jon Stewart in the DCAU, Jarvis and Wonder Man in Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, The Reach Ambassador, Aquaman and Green Beetle in Young Justice, Jarvis, Cloak, and Dormammu in Ultimate Spider-Man, and then Baxter Stockman in the 2012 show. John DiMaggio, who voices Sandman and Hammerhead, also played Bender from Futurama, 
Builder Bud from Teen Titans, Volcanus in all the Ben 10 shows, Jake the Dog from Adventure Time, Wrecker and Grizzly in the Ultimate Spider-Man show, The Jackal in the 2017 Spider-Man show, and Spider-Man 2 and Friend or Foe game, he was Rhino, and then also in Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, he returned to play Hammerhead. Josh Keaton, who obviously voiced Spider-Man, has also voiced Spider-Man in a bunch of different things, like the Marvel Superhero Squad video game, Ultimate Spider-Man from Shattered Dimensions, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Spider-Man Edge of Time, and then finally his most recent one was where he came back to voice Spectacular. He also has other voice roles in Spider-Man games that aren't Spider-Man, which are Harry Osborn in Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, and Spider-Man Friend or Foe, Electro in the Spider-Man 2018 game, Norman Osborn and J. Jonah Jameson from the Spider-Man 2017 show. He's also Green Lancer from that super underrated Green Lantern animated show. He played a Spider-themed character known as the Black Spider in a couple of episodes of Young Justice, which is obviously a nod to him playing Spider-Man since... Greg Wiseman also created Young Justice. I didn't mention everyone here, but that's mostly everyone. Everyone on the show did a great job. They really pulled out the A-team on this one, and it really shows. They all fit the characters really well. None of them feel out of place, and all of them are just fantastic. Show name. We'll talk a bit about uh, one of the classic comic books, is Spectacular Spider-Man. Talk a bit about the, the decision to call this show Spectacular Spider-Man instead of Amazing. Well, I knew I didn't want to just call it Spider-Man. I just felt like there's so been so many shows out there that where that was the name of the show, and the movies are just called Spider-Man without any adjective. And to me, it doesn't capture the fun of those early days. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I wanted uh, to um, have the adjective. Mm -hmm. The question of which adjective had nothing to do with creative and everything to do with legal. Um, mm. So, I mean, I don't think it's... I don't know if I should say this, but I guess it can't hurt. Um, again, just based on my background, the first thought out of my mind was Amazing Spider-Man. Right. Just for various legal reasons that I don't even pretend to understand but did not have to do with creative decisions. Um, hmm. Amazing Spider-Man was not available to us, so Spectacular Spider-Man was yeah. seemed like a natural um, second choice. Yeah, it's, but, it, I like know, that title better than Sensational or Web of Spider-Man or something like that. Spectacular had a really yeah, well, good run. Yeah, someone you know mentioned you know the stupendous Spider-Man. <laughs> the the uh, you know uh, we got a lot of goofy suggestions <laughs> at one point, but uh, I think you know basically once we learned that Amazing wasn't on the table, everyone yeah. again there wasn't. It wasn't like a fight. We just all said, well, that's spectacular. Right. Well, there's... Um, and, you know, now it's been a month, and I'm so used to it that, you know, I can't imagine us calling the show anything else. Yeah. Tier 3, Heading Out to Sea. Wrong description. For some reason on iTunes, they have a couple of episodes that have the description names wrong, and it's actually pretty interesting. For the fifth episode competition, it reads... As Norman Osborn and Hammerhead have Otto Octavius turn Flint Marco into Sandman, Spectacular Spider-Man and the Human Torch meet in a superhero showdown. But when Sandman shows up too, they must join forces to stop him. I'm assuming this was originally going to happen, but it didn't. And then the other ones are basically you just swap out the name Tombstone for Kingpin. They also mentioned for Episode 7, Catalyst, Fisk Industries would have been used instead of Tombstone's charity of benefit area. Cut Scenes there is a cutscene in the second Sandman Centered episode where it was going to show a little tiny Sandman after he sacrificed himself. There was also another cutscene wherein Rhino in episode 6 is looking in the phone book searching for all the Peter Parkers in the bigger New York area, and then he goes into this place and smashes in the door, and he finds this blind bassoon player, and he picks him up and says, Are you Peter Parker the photographer? And he says, No, I'm Peter Parker the bassoon player, and he points to his bassoon, which was actually his cane. And you can actually see him playing his instrument in season 1 episode 8. It's in the first minute or two. Spider-Man also saves him from getting run over, and then he appears one more time at the hospital the gang eat at. There were scenes that were cut between Betty and Ned that would have explored their relationship more. They had a bunch of small season one scenes that will never see the light of day because they thought they were going to make these into movies. And I'll actually touch on that in a little bit later in the iceberg. But essentially the movies were going to be the episodes but non-cut. So we would just go right into the next episode and have small scenes connecting those episodes, which was the original plan. Some was actually shown at Comic-Con that is unused footage and it's all animated and everything. Where you see in group therapy that Fancy Dan and Ox are dressed up as cops and they help Shocker escape. And that's why we already see him out of prison in season two but no one really recorded stuff back then so it's just footage that will never see the light of day they were putting things into the dvd extras too that got cut as well i'm not sure if he's talking about like behind the scenes stuff like stylizing spidey and reanimated would show quite a bit of the behind the scenes stuff which is actually really interesting it's all on youtube so you can check them out if you want to greg wiseman work obviously the three main shows wiseman had worked on was gargoyles spectacular spider-man and young justice which are all fantastic shows but did you know that he tried working on the show Arrow when it first aired, but he didn't get the part. That is actually just crazy to me. They let go of a genius, which is which is sad. This also means we probably would have gotten a whole different version of Green Arrow, most likely the one more similar to the comics. He also did this really good 10 minute short of Green Arrow called DC Showcase Green Arrow, and that's also on YouTube if you want to check that out. Voice of Uncle Ben. I specifically didn't mention Uncle Ben's voice actor on purpose, so I can mention him here. 
Uncle Ben is played by Ed Asner, who had sadly passed away in 2021. But the very sweet part about him playing Uncle Ben in the show was that Greg always knew he wanted him to play Uncle Ben, and that just kind of tugged on my heartstrings a little bit. He played him perfectly in my opinion. I'll also mention that he played Jonah Jameson in the 90s Spider-Man show, played Carl from Up, Hudson from Gargoyles, and I'd also played Santa from Elf, and he's Santa in regular show as well. He was a very talented voice actor rest in peace. MTV Spider-Man. The MTV Spider-Man show was absolutely fantastic and was most definitely the Spider-Man show that had the darkest themes and unfortunately I don't think we're ever going to get a cartoon Spider-Man that got dark that dark ever again but at least we have one season of this amazing show. Greg Wiseman was actually jealous of this show but his jealousy grew away quickly once um he started spectacular. Tier 4 say no more. Goblin Glider slash Vulture Wings. The flying tech that he's used from the Vulture is also used for the glider, and I like that everything is condensed, like how the gobwebs are connected to Spider-Man's webs. Everything feels like it's not coming out of nowhere. Also, a great little touch is the glider also has the same sound as the Vulture Wings, which is just some great attention to detail. Radio Play. There was a Gargoyles and Spider-Man radio play a long time ago, and there's actually two of them, and these were just fun little radio plays, which again are all on YouTube if you want to check them out. I'll play little bits here because it's just really fun to hear the characters talking to each other and everything, and it also gives a little insight, which is pretty cool. Meanwhile, in Forest Hill... Peter, what are you doing now? I was just studying for today's English final. It's on Midsummer Night's Dream, and I miss seeing the Cliff Notes version. Which may explain why you and Miss Allen are no longer a couple. It may. You know we didn't break up because I missed her play. All right. I shouldn't be glib. I suppose there's no chance that you and Quinn... No. Well, no. Not now, anyway. Not when Harry's hurting so much from the death of his father. It hardly seems possible that Norman Osborne is gone. The Bugle says he's the Green Goblin, but I'm not sure I can believe that. Sometimes I think it's okay to believe everything you read. Hey, Pete! So, I do. Horrible, probably. I mean, you know, English is like my worst subject. It's all so subjective and... Dear. Okay, okay, not the look. Probably aced it. Happy? Bet you did well. Always. Thanks. Look, when I... Hey, well, what are we here? My best friend and girlfriend conferring in a corner. Planning a surprise party for me? Uh, it's not your birthday here. I thought maybe it was a thank you badge for giving you both these. You are cordially invited to spend spring break traveling by private jet to Miami, where you'll stay all expenses paid at the Osborne Lutheran compound on the beach. You're inviting the three of us to spend a week together in Florida? No. Not just the three of us. Osborne, do you rock? Seven days in the serpent turf? All you can eat. Girls in bikinis. Score! Score. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Shoshan. Hi, Glory. Uh, Shoshan, uh, so how much of that did you hear? Look, look, Glory, I, 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 you know I meant you, right? I mean, who else would I want to see in a bikini? Uh, you're not going to break up with me again, are you? Oh my god! Harry, I just found the invitation in my locker, and all I have to say is that you can be my super dweeb sugar daddy anytime you want. <laughs> uh, you, you okay with that, Rand? It's cool. You can be my super dweeb sugar daddy, too. <laughs> to this thing. A handful, Kenny and Glory, Flash and Tishan, Ren and Sally, Hobie and Mindy, uh, MJ, Gwen, oh, and you and Liz, of course. Harry, I think you broke up. Oh, you did? Wow. No, I had no idea. I guess I've just been so focused on my own problems. My dad dying and everything. You know? <laughs> That's why I need this trip. I gotta clear my head, you know, but maybe you two can reconcile. I don't think so. It's too late for that, Harry. I'm with Jason now. We totally fell in love doing the play together. We did? Yes, you did! <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind if I bring Jason instead of Petey, do you? Hey, the more the merrier. Thanks, Harry. You're a doll. Kiss him! <laughs> you're still invited, too. Of course, it's more of a couple's thing, but hey, MJ's guy's in prison, so... Okay, thank you, Harry. Hadn't been reminded of that in the last five minutes. Sorry, sorry. It's just that I can't help remembering the all formal. You two made such a great pair. Don't you think so, Gwen? Oh, yeah, great. Well, I, I suppose we could go as friends. Just as friends. 
We'll talk later, Tiger. Listen carefully, humans, for I have listened to you. I can make all your petty little dreams come true. Dominic demands respect. Yeah. John craves power. Yes. Eddie needs hate. Yes. And all Cleaver's desires is a little carnage. Or a lot. I'm not picky. <laughs> then stick with me, boys. Respect, power, hatred, carnage. These are things I need. Oh, Robbie, I've got something. Is that way? Put him on speaker. No, no, Jonas, stay calm. Don't you tell me to stay calm, Joe Robertson. Is that your son at risk? Leave, leave, you there? I'll give you exactly 3.7 seconds to tell me where John's all right. Wish I could, Chief, but he disappeared with the rest. There are six image, uh, patients missing. It's not clear if they busted out or were kidnapped. Well, of course John was kidnapped. You think my son was? Right. Then, give me the whole list. Who cares about the list? It could provide a lead to John. Doc Ock, Electro, John, uh, let's see, Edward Brock Jr., Cletus Cassidy, and Dominic Dracon. Dominic Dracon? Yo, mob bus? Yeah, this is a name I haven't heard in a while. Foswell, you know that world. Find out where Dracon might have gone. You got it, JJ. We used it for the damn supervillain angle. Huh? Electro, what's their name? Boom! <laughs> My bus. Right? I want every male old man on this. No, damn it, I want every man, woman, and child on this. Back in his mother's arms in six point. Uh, six point. It's okay, Jonah. We're on it. Good. Good. I'll uh, I'll hit the streets myself. I'm still the best damn reporter in New York City. Just have to make a call first. Well, what are you all waiting for? Get out! Out! I don't know any better. I think Harry was trying to torture me in point. And again, MJ is quite the consolation prize. <laughs> oh, man, what do I say? I'm in love with Gwen. Gwen, Gwendolyn, Stacy. So have to get through the next few weeks, and then Harry and I will be in a better place, and she and I will get rain on the place, itsy bitsy spot. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Joe Robinson. There's an incident at Ravencroft. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait, wait, wait. Who, who's missing? Uh, him too? Oh, crap. Uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, what? Seriously? Uh, right, yeah, no, I'll keep my eyes open. Camera lens at the ready. Thanks for the heads up. Bye. <sighs> well, at least this day can't get any worse. What the hell are those things? And when am I gonna learn to not say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> Spidey swings down to find two men in a van being attacked by two gargoyles, Obsidiana and Zephyra. Hey there. Uh, like, I, I hate to interrupt, but this lady s blue creature thing matches the description of another lady s blue creature thing who just busted some folks out raving. What is he babbling about? I have no idea. I sense no connection between him and the source of disturbance. But those two... Yeah. Keep her away from us! Okay, you see, now I'm on the horns of a dilemma. Uh, no offense, it's just an expression. I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> rather striking. Never mind. See, in this particular Spider-Man's experience, when genetic misfits attack ordinary human beings, I'm gonna have to side with the humans. Hey, Sophia, the human with no knowledge of the situation, leaping to defend one of his own. Sophia attacks Spidey. Ah! Oh! Ah! 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 Obsidiana tries to follow, but Spidey webs her wings together. Por favor, you don't understand the powers that are gathered. And you're the one doing the gathering, I take it. No! Enough! No! Spiro slams Spidey into a wall. By the time the web slinger recovers, the gargoyles are gone. <sighs> For a guy with no legs, that snake thing can move. You spend so much time here, I'll need to buy you your own chair. <laughs> so you'll stay out of mine. Oh, surprised to see. It's not particularly. Then you won't be surprised to learn I'm still running things. If you can run them from a hospital bed. Captain <clears throat> Gobby off guard. Lincoln punches him right through the window. <laughs> the goblin glider swoops in and catches the goblin and pulls out a pumpkin bomb. Ever the gracious host and ever the gracious guest, the goblin must show his appreciation. <laughs> 
I was here. I brought a gift. Now he throws his gift, but Goliath swoops in, catches it, and throws it back. <laughs> Not far away. No, no, no. I was hoping I'd never hear that trademark pumpkin bomb shriek again. <laughs> Spidey swings in to find Goliath and are covering Gobby together. That's what these gargoyles are. One of the goblins' Halloween creations. Spidey swings into action against Goliath. <laughs> the bugle was right about you. You are a threat to the menace. Wait, wait, wait. You can talk and read? And what you read is the Jolly Ones editorials? <laughs> <laughs> No, I should assassinate Mr. Lincoln, but I'm so enjoying the show. Yeah. Really? Someone should make more gargoyles. I know. I'll call Walt Disney. <laughs> what the heck? Well, that was unexpected. All right, that's enough. I know you're not the real guy. Yes, yes, it's not the voice, it's the words, not the tech, but the news. I've heard it all before. Well, then I know exactly who you really are. Chameleon. Oh, that would ease your conscience, wouldn't it? To think I'm Chameleon and not the ghost of the man you killed. I don't believe in ghosts. Then maybe you prefer I was the spawn of Goblin. Oh, you just love to shit the blame to hair. <laughs> Sorry, Gobby. I mean, Cammy. But we've been there, done that. Besides, no matter who you are, there hasn't been time for the globulin green to kick in and truly goblify you. So I'm going to take you down now while you're still just a cheap imitation. Oh, you could do that. Or you could save Stoneface over there. Gobby throws a pumpkin bomb at Goliath. Instinctively, Spidey webs the way. By this time, the goblin is gone, leaving a confused Spidey perched on Goliath's head. So, in hindsight, I'm thinking maybe you weren't part of the God Squad. <laughs> Fine, Stonewall. <laughs> that morning in Forest Hill, Spidey sneaks in through his bedroom window, hoping to catch a few Z's. Peter, are you away? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, sure. And man, just uh, get dressed. Well, hurry up. I'm conferencing with all the other parents. Are you sure you don't mind, Mrs. Parker? Because I gotta say, what you're proposing would be my worst nightmare. Oh, I don't believe that for a minute, Mr. Robertson. It's a joy to be around Peter and his friends. And I won't be alone. Anna Watson and Mrs. Osborne will be with me. Oh, Emily, she's so odd. I don't think she's ever said one word to me. Well, I don't know her very well. Rosie, but Harry's Peter's best friend. No, it's no offense to your Eugene. So she must be doing something right. May, you never change. Always seeing the best in people. I'll take that as a compliment, dear girl. Well, in any case, I'm glad to get Glenn out, Gwen out of Manhattan for a few days. The streets are looking pretty grim right up now. Oh, I'm sure your officers will have things under control in no time. Uh, Aunt May, what, what's going on? Oh, I didn't tell you, Peter. I'm chaperoning your trip to Miami Beach. <laughs> oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> Try to understand, Tiger. I just can't do that to Gwen. She's really become my best friend at Midtown. Well, it's not like we'd be making out or anything, right? Uh, uh, right. 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 <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, we'd be going as friends. Hanging out when the couples are, you know, Coupling? <laughs> that would be great, but look at it from her point of view. She took all the risks, and you still wound up with Liz. There's no way she'd see me as anything but a threat. Oh, wait, that sounded really conceited. Well, have you looked in a mirror? <laughs> it's not conceited, it's just fact. Oh, nice one. Such a player. You're right. The world's the loneliest player. Stop it. I know you don't want to hurt Gwen either. Not after all the two of you have been through. Yeah. I wonder if Miss Brandt likes Miami. I'm kidding. Kidding. Wow. That's pretty good. That, that was practically the look. Or 71. <laughs> so you're, you're just not going? No, oh, I'm going. It's 48 degrees outside. It's 82 in Miami. I asked Tiny to be my plus one. Tiny? Tiny McKeever? That guy's got the brain of an amoeba. He makes King Kong look like a genius. Hell, he makes Flash look like Stephen Hawking. <laughs> <laughs> He's cute. I just wish I could skip the whole thing. But Aunt May's going, and 
after her heart attack. I really think she could use some fun in the sun. Oh, sorry to interrupt, guys. I couldn't help overhearing. Oh, hey, Seymour. Just wanted to let you know that Harry invited me to. <laughs> I'm totally going stack, dude. I mean, who wants a ball and chain when Miami Beach is full of honeys, right? <laughs> Just don't expect to hang out, okay? You'd fully cram my style. Of course I would. It is time, Calypso. Yes, the forces gather. We can make this one our own. I demand you let me go. Hold your dumb American dog, or Ruliadkin will hold it for you. Calm yourself. This change will not be difficult. The primitive bound within is barely skin deep. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. You see, my companion, the details may have been created in a laboratory. But the soul of the hunter, the beast inside, was all my own. What are you doing with that doll? Turning it inside out. Listen to me. Please, even if you can release the beast inside, you don't want to. It can't be controlled. Yet. Not by you, perhaps. But my Calypso is not so easily trifled with. It is time. No! <laughs> Okay, Captain. The rest of the task force is on its way. My men are deployed. Uh, and just in time, because we got Gobby and his pumpkin heads at 12 o'clock. <laughs> Playtime! And a, gar and a gargoyle three o'clock. That's not a gargoyle, that's the vulture! You were right, Otto. The police were waiting. And the goblin is here, too. You don't think it still could actually be Osborne alive, do you? Do not get distracted by old grudges, Adrian. It hardly matters who wears the green. His intent is still to prevent me from regaining my arms. You must keep the goblin and the authorities occupied. Of course! Now, Electro, open that vault! Roger that, Doc. Oh, white boys, give me them jewels! I think what the boss means is destroy the competition. <laughs> Carnage time! Yeah, go, kill, whatever. <laughs> Colonel Jupiter will stop the Green Goblin and Vulture in their tracks. Knock yourself out. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Someone worthy of our hate. But we have faith. You come. Oh my, my, my. The field's getting crowded. Let's thin the herd. Pumpkin heads, release the hounds. <clears throat> that was a metaphor. <laughs> Throw your pumpkin bombs already! <laughs>
Hey, Goliath. It's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. You protect your neighborhood? <laughs> Just like you do the superhero thing without the tights. <laughs> Spider-Man, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> I was just going to say that. You saw the movie too? <laughs> movie? <laughs> EMH situation. In Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the Spider-Man that appears in the show was supposed to be Spectacular Spider-Man, and that was the original plan with Josh Keaton even doing the lines, but unfortunately his lines were cut because the new Ultimate Spider-Man show was coming out, and they replaced Josh Keaton for Drake Bell, because I assumed they were going to have these universes connected, but that all fell apart once this show was cancelled and replaced by the worst Avengers Assemble show, and they also had a lot of inconsistencies with Ultimate Spider-Man, so this Spider-Man from this show is not Ultimate Spider-Man nor Spectacular, but its own version. I think in my opinion, this can be completely headcanon to think he's Spectacular, even though the creator had confirmed he isn't spectacular. But I think since he wasn't even allowed to do his version of the Marvel Universe anyway, why not let him be spectacular even though he has a different voice, but if we look past that, he's spectacular to me. I think if Greg ever showed his version of the Marvel Universe, then I would take back my claims at saying he is spectacular. But again, I don't think we'll ever actually see his version, so my headcanon will always be he is spectacular Spider-Man. Flash's mom. Flash's mom was modeled after her voice actress, Vanessa Marshall, which again is also the voice of MJ, which is just a pretty neat fact. Tier 5. I'm about to arrive. Merchandise. Spectacular Spider-Man has its fair share of merchandise and I would like to look at all the merchandise for the show. So the toys here are pretty cool. So they have the casual big Spider-Man, which are three different versions of actually. So this is the Spider-Sense Spider-Man that has some pretty funny looking armor pieces. And then we have the electronic Spider-Man and you can connect a web to him. And it looks like he can make web sounds from the button that you press. And finally, you have the wisecracking Spidey, which I actually had at one point, but I just have no clue where it went. And this one does the same thing as the last one, but can also talk and has different web set things you can do with it. And Josh Keaton does the voice for the figure. So that's pretty cool. Then we have the vehicles and for some reason there's actually quite a bit of them So we have the spectacular spider-man car that shoots two villain blasting rockets Then we have the rocket plane and it shoots two rockets as well Then we have the spider chopper with a capture claw and then we have the spider-man crime cruiser Which has two battle modes racing and combat then we have the cycle So the first cycle is the web rider which has the classic suit and red and blue color scheme for the cycle And then we have the super cycle which had the black and white costume with a black and white cycle then they have the super motor hero sets so here's a small spider-man a small black and white spider-man costume spider-man a small venom a small green goblin a small dr octopus and these little small rider toys could clip onto your belt buckle or your keychain so that's pretty cool they also had the basic things like stickers plates a lexi book a ball lunchbox pencil pouches and then finally shirts they had four big play sets that were all called the Oscorp Ooze Factories. So the first one here is with the Green Goblin, and this one it looks like it comes with actual ooze. I don't know if they all came with ooze, but it doesn't look like it. Then we have the one with Venom, which looks really neat, and this one comes with ooze as well. Then we have the one with Rhino, weirdly enough. Not sure why they chose Rhino and not Tombstone. Maybe because they're Hasbro and they thought a pale guy in a suit wouldn't sell too much and... That's why there's actually no toys of him. But this one is cool. It has Spidey in the black suit fighting Rhino at the zoo. Then the final one we have is Spider-Man in the black suit fighting Lizard. And I actually really like the art on this one. It looks really good, especially the black suit. It has a little blight hoo to it. Um, I like that a lot. Then we move on to the actual action figures. So here we have Peter where you can put his mask on and off and have a zipline backpack. Then we have a wall hanging Spider-Man with the suction things on the corner of the web. Then we have Spider-Man in the black suit and he has a wall sticking web line. We have Spider-Man in the spider armor that looks pretty silly. And then we have the Spider-Man in the black suit again and he has the similar suction web things that the red Sp Spidey had. We now have Electro and he looks good. He has his mask which is cool and you can make him shoot out lightning. We have the lizard and he looks okay. Not much to say about him. We have Sandman, he looks really good. I love the sand textures and he has his sand hammer, which is really cool. We have Rhino and not much to say about him either. He looks all right. We have Green Goblin, he looks amazing, especially the pumpkin bombs, those look great. We have Dr. Octopus and he isn't looking that great. He's also missing his leather jacket. And finally we have Venom, which looks all right. Now we move on to the spider charge sets. So we have the many variations of Spider-Man. I'm not even gonna go over all of them since most of them are pretty goofy looking. There's one that looks similar to the Electro-Proof suit, but it isn't. There's some that are the same as they were in the first pack, but now they just have the spider in the bottom left for some reason. Don't really see the point in that, but cool, I guess. We have two villains that weren't in the first set, and that's Vulture and Shocker. They look alright, not much to say about them. 
They have Electro again. He's basically the same as the other one. Not much really changed. We have a worse version of the lizard and you can tell they made him lighter and it just doesn't look as good. But he does come with a crocodile this time, so that's pretty cool. We have Sandman, he looks all right. Doesn't look like he's very flexible though. <laughs> like it doesn't look like you can move his arms around that much. We have Green Goblin and I actually really like this design here. I think it looks pretty cool. We have Doc Ock and he actually looks pretty good this time around. But he does look a bit stiff, like it doesn't look like he mo can move that much, but other than that, he looks pretty good. Here's a really good look at all the villains, and I just couldn't help but put this in here because it looks really cool. But yeah, I did end up finding a couple extra things. So we have this cool looking mask with this web shooter toy, and then there was this other cheap looking mask, but it's still pretty neat. Here's a puzzle, and then the McDonald's Happy Meal toys. I don't know how I forgot about these. And then finally we have the Bird King toys. Auditions. As we know, everybody in the cast did a great job and it shows in every episode, but did you know they looked over 2,000 roles for the voice of Spider-Man? First, storyboard. The first storyboard done for the show consisted of the beginning scene of episode 13, where he's fighting the thugs, but I can't find the storyboards for this fight, so it's just a fact. Storyboards. Here's a bunch of storyboards I found and I just thought they were really cool, so I'm just taking a look at it. Newer characters. Greg Wiseman has stated if the show was brought back in some capacity, that he would consider using characters that hadn't existed back then. So if I did come back, somehow we might get a whole different show than what we were originally gonna get. So that's just an interesting detail. Tier six, where's the chicks? Producing episodes. The amount of time it takes to produce an episode is wild. And I'll put a clip letting Greg and Vic explain how all that goes down. Uh, how long does it take the average episode to be completed from start to finish? Oh my gosh, uh, Greg is going to have to tell you about the script process, but after script, um, from record to the animation coming back and posting it, I want to say seven months, seven to eight months. And given the way that I work, which is that we basically break all the stories in advance, we, we get all the premises approved before we write a single script, um, and that process takes some time, and then you know, you've got the outline script, multiple drafts sometimes of each. Um, and then the voice recording, I would say the whole process, if you add in what Vic just said to that, you're talking about about 10 months. And, and by um, the way, we're not just working on one episode in eight months. It's like right. Overlap City. So uh, we're handing yeah, out, we're, we're, we're doing a show uh, a week on that show, a week, three weeks in a row. We'd have like a week gap, and then we'd do it again three in a row. Yeah, and by the way, that week gap isn't like a vacation. It's not like, <laughs> you know, no. it's not like oh, we're taking a week off. What we're saying is, is that we launched a show, you know, three out of four weeks. But those shows are all in process. 
all the way from premise through post production. You know, once the show is launched, it never stops working. One way or another, you're working on that show. So, for example,、um, we did、uh, 26 episodes. It took us about two years to do it. So, you heard me say seven to eight months for one episode to come be done, right? So, what that really means is, in that two years you're making the show, around the eight month point, now you're doing double duty because the shows you've already written and storyboarded are now you're posting those while you're still handing out new episodes. You know, so、uh, it's a lot of work.、Um, I mean, I, Greg, I, mean, I remember. I was- Yeah, Greg, I remember. I was,、uh, go ahead. Yeah, I remember. I was living in Los Angeles at the time the show was on, and my brother came out to visit me, and we had a tour of the studio. And this is right after the Sandman episode aired, but before the Rhino episode aired, and they were doing post production on this very episode. And when it aired, my brother said to me, "I had no idea they were working that still working the episodes that close to the air date." And yeah, that's air not. Date, normal, I, by the way, that's not normal. <laughs> that's not usual. That's not usual. They、uh, agreed to these air dates, you know, way ahead. Most studios will factor in、uh, padding. So, in other words, they'll have episodes in the bank, like three or four episodes in the bank, long before they'll even air the first episode.、But、yeah, we were in a situation where I think our first episode came back and we posted it just in time for a WonderCon presentation, and then, like, it seems like within a week or so later, it was on TV, and episodes were coming almost a month before they would air. I mean, back from overseas. So, yeah, that's not an ideal way. I mean, to- we were there at that、um, Sony Apple building once post got started. Um, we were there till way into the night, working with our <laughs> editors, who were Bruce and Ralph the first season, and Bruce and、uh, Damon the second season. Had, we had a lot of takeout Thai food. I saw、uh, way too much Greg Wiseman during that time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> failed fan project. There is a failed fan project for the Spectacular Spider-Man season three. They keep saying that they will come out with something very soon, and have been saying that since July 2019. But they seem to be making absolutely no progress. They were going to do the Spring Break movie with the Lizard in Florida, but again, not many updates. They did release a teaser trailer in 2021 and plan to release the second one supposedly soon, which was stated in July of this year. But again, this project seems to be dead, and it doesn't look like we're going to get anything from them anytime soon. Spider Verse. As we all know, hopefully by now, that Spectacular Spider-Man appeared in Across the Spider Verse. But did you know that he also appeared in the Ultimate Spider-Man Spider Verse event as one of the Spider-Man that was being. By Wolf Spider, Chris Wyatt had said that license restrictions prevented them from expressively using the Spectacular Spider-Man. But if they didn't have those issues, then he would have been featured prominently in the show's Spider-Verse arc. So that means maybe we would have gone to his dimension and he would have had an episode based around it. But we'll never know since they weren't allowed to use him. The Spider-Verse comic writer Dan Slott wanted to use Spectacular 2, but wasn't allowed to due to the same licensing issues. But they were also not allowed to use MTV 90s Toby and Andrew Spider-Man either, which I'm guessing. They weren't allowed to either for the other Spider Verse. Future Chris will be here. Greg and Josh actually did reveal how they felt about Spectacular coming back and going on to Miguel's side, and I find it very interesting. So I'm just going to add it here to the Spider Verse part of the iceberg because it just makes sense. The only way I could see it is that the way I rationalize it is that if Captain Stacy did die, that's another massive male figure in his life that's now gone, and. Peter blames himself for absolutely everything that happens to people. He he takes it upon himself, and 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 you know really just tortures himself over these things. Tortures himself over Uncle Ben,、um, saying you know not my problem.、Um, and so it's if somebody comes from the future, another Spider Man, and basically explains to you, hey, you know this is all part of a bigger thing. It's It's hard for me to to not believe that a young impressionable Spider-Man, who every time he has somebody that he really looks up to and cares about,、um, being just taken from him that way, is not going to now look up to this other person who seems to have all the answers, and and believe that you know maybe this is possible and maybe this is part of the sacrifice that I have to make as Spider-Man. That I can't save everybody. I can try, but I can't save everybody. And and you know, like and again, who's to say that that decision holds? To see a version of Spectacular Spider-Man with Josh Keaton voicing him for the cameo was how how that make you feel when you were watching it in the film in the movie theater? So、um, I knew from Josh that he had recorded that, and I was. Beyond thrilled for him. 
So I knew it was, you know, the question became, yeah, but did it survive? Is it on the cutting room floor or is it actually in? So I, um, you know, when I went to see it, I had a lot of anticipation. Is it going to be in there? Is it not going to be in there? Will it be in there for a half a second? And then, you know, and I had no idea. Um, I am of two minds on it. Um, on the one hand, the, and this is just me being honest. This is not a comment on the filmmakers. I love both those movies. I want to make that really clear. Um, but what I will say is, is that, as great as it was to hear Josh in the movie, I did not for a second buy that our version of Peter Parker would have um, taken Joaquin's side on that. Taken, uh, wait, that's not his name. It's uh, Miguel. Miguel. Miguel, yeah, sorry. Miguel's side on that. Joaquin, who I know, co directed the movie. That's why I got mixed up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i didn't buy that miguel would come down and try and convince um miles to let his father die i didn't believe that for a hot second we've had in our show the whole thing about um There's a scene in our show where um, Black Cat asks Peter to just look the other way for her father when they're breaking, yeah. when she's trying to break him out of prison. And Peter makes it very clear, no, never again. I'm never looking the other way again. I don't care what the consequences are. I'm never going to do that again. So I cannot fathom are Peter Parker from Spectacular siding with Miguel against Miles over the idea of letting his father die for the sake of the canon. Now, I don't know where the third movie's going. I've got no input. I, just to be very clear, I'm not in contact with these people. I have no <laughs> input on this whatsoever. I don't know what the end result is. I don't know where this movie's going. What I know is that the Peter that we wrote would not take that side. Um, I think I can buy that there are plenty of, in an infinite universe of Spider-Man, there are plenty that would. And I can buy that right next to the spectacular Spider-Man universe is another one that's almost exactly the same, so close that it's also voiced by Josh Keaton. <laughs> and the main difference is that Captain Stacy had black hair instead of white hair for some goddamn reason that I couldn't <laughs> figure out. Um, and so how I made this work for me in a movie that, again, I really liked a lot was I just said, this isn't ours. This is the one universe right next to it that still has that is so similar that that the voice still sounds like Josh Keaton, but is with a Peter who isn't, who could be swayed over to Miguel's side. I don't think our Peter could have been swayed um, to that side. I don't think our Peter would in a million years say to Miles, I'm sorry, it's horrible, but you've got to let your father die. Our Peter would have been one of the guys at the end of the movie jumping through that hole to help miles um and it's not like i expected that it's not like i'm like oh spectacular should have a much bigger role in this i, I was pleased that they again did anything with it at all and i'm thrilled for josh period um but yeah i had mixed feelings about it because i i didn't i felt like if you watched our show carefully, you would not have made him the mouthpiece for that moment. Um, you would have right. done right. something else with him, but not for that moment. Um, that would not have come out of our Spider-Man's mouth. Okay. It's a nuancy thing, I, but that's how I, I feel I, about it. No, it's, I, I'd seen you kind of talk about it 
online, but I, I hadn't heard anybody like a- address that with you, like like we just did. You could, you could I actually didn't yourself, ever yeah. talk about it online. Um, never talked about it publicly before now. And the difference is, is that on a tweet, I didn't feel I could. I feel I felt like it That's would just right. be taken out of context and 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 make it sound like I was bad mouthing the movie. This could. With a clip, they could probably do that still here, but at least <laughs> in the fullness of Don't this clip. podcast, you get the context of what I'm saying. I love these movies. I truly, I can't tell you how impressed I am by these movies. I produce animation. I know how hard it is. And what they have done is beyond the pale. Like the logistics, we talked about logistics before. The logistics of doing the movie that they did the first one too, but the second one is is just I it I, I can't even fathom it. How how you, you you're not simply doing a different art style for each world. You're doing a different art style from scene to scene. You're doing different characters and different. I, I it is a nightmare to contemplate as a professional. A nightmare, and yet they did it, and they did it wonderfully. Um, yeah, it is insane the level of detail in that film. Um, again, in the first one too, but then the second one ups the ante on that by, I mean, exponentially. It is nuts, and they pull it off. I am, I, I can't say how impressed I am with that mo- movie. So the fact that I have a personal stake in one character one version of one character and i have a nitpick about it that's all it is is a nitpick it's uh but and so i felt here i could talk about that in context uh, but i have not done it before because on twitter i just felt like it would sound like i was bad mouthing the movie and i don't want to do that i love that movie greg's never seen it. as we know greg has seen the mtv spider-man series the 60s one and spider-man and his amazing friends but has not seen spider-man the animated series but only a few episodes spider-man unlimited and ultimate spider-man last episode no sound unfortunately the round table beat me to this fact even though i've had it in my notes since i started this series But anyway, the last episode aired without sound because Disney hated this show and wanted it to fail, which is just true, there's no doubt about it. The Roundtable's video actually does a great job of explaining it and showing how Disney fucked it over with its time slots and it had very little promotion by them. It's pretty sad and they also messed up the sound for the season 1 finale when he's fighting those slugs on the helicopter, so Disney was just ready to kill this show. The worst thing was the last episode, when episode 26 aired, last episode of season 2. I, literally, this is what I picture having. I don't know this, but this is what I picture having. The episode begins, and it's a big fight sequence with Spider-Man. And, you know, Spider-Man usually quips, tells jokes and stuff during a fight, right? Well, he's silent through this fight. In fact, no one's grunting. The music is playing. The sound effects are all playing. But there's no dialogue whatsoever. And in that first sequence, um, you could almost believe that it was on purpose because it's just a big fight scene and you've got all these talking scenes with no dialogue as it aired the first time and what i picture is when it was broadcast some guy's leaning on a button and having a conversation with his buddy and at some point the buddy says how come those characters aren't talking and the guy looks over and he goes oh shit and he takes his arm and so for the last Five minutes of the episode, the dialogue just cuts in. But for the first 18 minutes, there is no dialogue when it aired the very first time. I nearly, my head nearly exploded. Um, And at first I thought it was a problem with my TV, but I couldn't figure out how that could happen. I mean, in other words, how is it that the music is playing and the sound effects are playing, but the dialogue track isn't playing? Of course, it was a problem at the broadcast. Yeah, luckily it was a broadcast. So the second time it aired, by the second time it was fixed, but the very first time it aired, we were getting, you know, uh, postings on message boards saying, you know, I I like that they tried this cool thing with no dialogue, I'm not sure it really worked. Very artistic choice. Yeah, and we're like, 
No! Tier 7, The Deep End. Attack of the Lizard. Attack of the Lizard was one of the DVD movies that I had originally talked about. This is the only one that had actually came out. So it does have some differences, like they changed the title of the episode to September. The ad breaks are completely cut instead of fading into black like in the volume cuts. It cuts right into the next episode with zero cuts at all. And then the biggest change is that they add extra scenes or change scenes, and I'll show you all of those now. Come on, quarterback, can't you complete a single? <laughs> Come on, quarterback, can't you complete a single? <laughs> The YouTuber known as the Skeleton Man 939 shows all of the changes, so if you want to check that out, I'll leave it in the description. Organic webs. Organic webs were originally going to be used in the show, but luckily they had changed their minds due to one person, Joshua Fine. Joshua Fine has a pretty funny story actually on him convincing the team to switch to organic webs, and I'll play that now. Probably my biggest contribution to the series, and I don't even know if Greg or Vic know that it was me that was responsible for this, was that um, uh, they were originally intending to use the organic web shooters from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. Yeah. And I hate those. I, I have just like a personal pet peeve. I, I loathe them. They creep me out. I just don't like the idea of them. I think they are contrary to Spider-Man as a character. And I, I made a huge campaign to bring back the mechanical web shooters. Um, I wrote like a six point essay on all the reasons why the mechanical web shooters are better than the organic ones. And uh, my boss at the time, Craig Kyle, when I first was lobbying, he was not convinced. And then he read my like short essay on the subject. He's like, actually, you've got a lot of good points. I'm going to, he passed it on to Kevin Feige, who was kind of overseeing animation at the time. Nice. Kevin read it. Kevin agreed. He's like, yeah, do the mechanical computers for sure. Uh, that essay got like passed on to Tom Cohen, who is overseeing uh, our licensed live action movies, like the Fox and, and Sony movies. So they went into production on, um, on the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movie shortly thereafter. And they were looking for any way to make those movies different than the Tobey Maguire ones. And he suggested based on my essay, like doing the mechanical web shooters, they're like, yeah, we're definitely <laughs> going to do that. So like, I feel a little bit responsible for the fact that the mechanical web shooters again, supplanted the organic web shooters across all media. Um, That's crazy. We brought them big, we brought them back in the comics too. Like they transitioned back from, uh, from the organic ones and um, yeah it's something that probably would have happened anyway eventually without me but um, I don't know I, I... your push changed it yes. I mean uh, and I'm I don't, I don't know because I haven't seen your six point essay I would love to read that but I'm, <laughs> assuming, I'm, get out of email. <laughs> I'm assuming one of the one of the reasons you probably put down is the fact that it raises the stakes because he doesn't have in this amount of web he yes. at some point he's gonna run out of cartridges and then also too when kevin feige got the joint deal with sony for tom holland spider-man not organic they went with you know cartridge it's like they probably, they're probably thinking yeah that, that josh guy he uh he suggested let's <laughs> keep that when we, we're gonna we're gonna reboot spider-man again let's keep that uh, I, I feel like it also distinguishes spider-man from any other hero at marvel mm -hmm. because when they're organic he starts to like skew very close to a mutant in terms of just having all of his powers be powers yeah um i was and, just thinking i was just thinking that mutant yeah that's a good point the mechanical nature of them highlights his genius and they it just it's it's a very unique weapon because it's not just a weapon it's a tool it's something that he can use in a variety of different ways 
Um, and with all of the different functionality that it can do between like web balls and, and um, creating spider webs and, you yeah. know, parachutes and whatnot, it makes more sense for it to be mechanically based, I think, than, than not. To say nothing of the fact that, you know, if it was actually derived from the spider bed, I think Bendis made a joke about this in, I, in Ultimate Spider-Man. It's a good thing that that wasn't one of his natural powers because there's no telling where that web would be coming out of. <laughs> well, like, you, you've seen Spider-Man No Way Home, I'm assuming. Have you seen the film? I haven't seen it yet, believe it or not. Oh, okay, okay. Because there's something that was actually mentioned about that, but I won't bring it up. But you should see the movie. I think you should. Mm. This interview is from the Chainsaw Reacts channel on YouTube, and I actually didn't realize how many YouTube videos I would be mentioning in this video, but I'll leave everything in the description if you want to check any of them out. Writing Ultimate Spider-Man In the Ask Greg archive, someone had wrote if Greg would have been open to writing an episode of Ultimate Spider-Man, and he says he would have been despite not having watched the show. I think it would have been pretty interesting to see him write an episode of Ultimate Spider-Man. Nobody wants Josh Keaton. Josh Keaton unfortunately has been dogged over quite a few times. So first was the previously mentioned Earth's Mightiest Heroes as Spider-Man, where he was replaced by Drake Bell, and he wasn't even told. Maybe three episodes? Uh, I can't remember. It was either two or three. Um, and this was after Spectacular Spider-Man I had already finished recording for, and I knew it wasn't going to get picked up because, you know, Disney... Um, we didn't know that Ultimate Spider-Man was even going to happen yet. We just knew that when I recorded it. We just knew that... Um, we were kind of aware that the show was not going to get picked up because they were really taking a long time to tell us. And they never told us it was going to be canceled. They just didn't tell us it was going to be picked up. And they had initially said that they wanted to um, have us on their network, on Disney XD, because it was a new network and they wanted it to headline the, the network or whatever. Um, but then what ended up happening is that they started showing the show out of order. They never had it on the same time. They never did any promotion for it. So we're like, they're putting it on here to die, aren't they? And then when we didn't hear anything about it, we kind of knew, you know, they're, they're probably getting rid of the show. But Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, was going to be the kind of like my, my send off. So I was like, all right, sweet. Well, at least I get to play Spider-Man in, in this last thing. That'll, that's cool. That's cool. Awesome. And then uh, the night that it aired and I was going to watch it, um, I watched it and I was like, wow, that is not my voice. That is not my voice. He's hitting all the same beats I'm hitting because, you know, the animation was probably already done. So they had to just have him kind of listen and repeat to what I did and say, OK, now you do it. Um, and I was like, that's that's not my voice. Uh, and then when I looked at the credits, it said Drake Bell. It's like, wow. OK. And then that's right around then is when they announced we're coming out with Ultimate Spider-Man and Drake Bell's going to play Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, and I was like, that sucks. That sucks that they, they did that to me. Like, they could have at least called me so I wouldn't have gotten so excited. Yeah, as you can see, he got absolutely fucked over. And the sad part is, he auditioned for the role in Ultimate Spider-Man as well, and obviously didn't get the cut, as we get a horrible performance by Drake Bell. Your friendly neighborhood Ultimate Spider-Man reporting for duty, sir! Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? And then the final time he got cut out of something was in the Spider-Man 1 video game, where he again, he got all of his lines cut that he had already done for Spider-Man because they were actually able to get Toby later on. And instead, he was just Harry Osborn in the goblin suit, which is, uh, at least he was still in the game. Tier 8, the beginning of the end. Aaron and Benny. Aaron and Benny were characters that were in Spectacular Spider-Man Season 1, Episode 6, and Season 2, Episode 5. Benny and Aaron are Greg Wiseman's kids' names, and that's why they are named in the show, because every named character is an actual character in the Spider-Man mythos, besides these two. I actually didn't know this, and this man right here, Merman7775, let me know in the comics. Thank you, friend. I very much appreciate it. Live Action Fan Project There isn't much to say about this fan project, since not much has happened with it yet. So this might potentially be another failure, but I have hope that this will actually come out. But my hopes have always been led abroad since the Spectacular Spider-Man Fan Made Season 3 seems to be going nowhere and the MTV Spider-Man Fan Made Season 2 got cancelled. From this first concept look damage we saw in June, it looks to be pretty promising and we'll also have some changes compared to the animated version, like things they couldn't add like Kingpin, but other than that there isn't much to be said about this since they are still very early in development. Fantastic Fan Comic 
There is a fantastic fan comic of season three. I only read about the first two issues, but it is absolutely fantastic. I need to read the rest soon. It has some phenomenal artwork that has the show's art style, and not many people have checked it out, unfortunately. I cannot recommend checking this out enough. This is insanely great, and I'm sure any fan of the show will enjoy this comic series. I will leave a link to this in the description for you to check out these amazing comics. They are completely free, and I cannot recommend them enough. Spider-Man Comic Proposal. Speaking of spectacular Spider-Man comics, you think the reasonable thing to go to would be to do a comic. But unfortunately, Greg Wiseman has already tried this, and he said Marvel didn't bite. So unfortunately, that's not happening, but he did say this all the way back in 2012, so who knows? It's been a decade. We might be able to get this amazing show to come back in some capacity one day. Just look at Across the Spider-Verse. We were able to see him again, even if it was just for a little bit, and we also saw Toby and Andrew return in one movie, which is still mind-blowing after all this time, so... Who knows? Breakdown series. Yes, I know a lot of you know this, but for the new people that are here that don't, there is a breakdown series on the show that has a ton of work put into it. Countless hours have went into it, tons of research, and it gives a whole lot of insight on the show with going into super deep territory, and I would heavily, heavily recommend checking it out. It is on my channel, and I put a lot of passion into it. Please try not to judge the earlier breakdown videos too much, as I was still learning how to do YouTube, and I I w I'm not, I wasn't at the point I am at now. I've loved doing this project so much. This is my final video on the Spectacular Spider-Man project, and I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been a long journey going all the way back to June 26, 2021, and so, so much has happened. And I've grown so much as a person and as an editor. I'm glad all of you can make it on this journey with me, and I can't wait to get into the next series, which will be Invincible. So look forward to that whenever that may come because I actually don't know myself. Hey guys, it's Future Crispy. Sorry it's been so long. I was not expecting to go this long without a video. I just really, really suck at having these videos come out on certain dates just because a lot of time definitely goes into these videos. Like the voice actor section took me like three hours just for a minute, just for that section. And don't even get me started on adding subtitles to that radio play entry. That took absolutely forever. By the way, that was my first time doing subtitles, so I'm actually curious if you guys actually found them to be well done, since it's sometimes very hard to hear them in that room. There's a chance I messed up sometimes with what they're saying, but anyway, good news is that the videos will actually start coming out again every other week. I'm shooting for August, so hopefully everything goes to plan. This video is just kind of like here just till August, you know, just to get you there. I've just been very frustrated. I can't really depend on anyone to help me with the videos, and I'm wasting a lot of time on people, you know. I'm describing everything in a script, and it does take a lot of time and then they just end up leaving so I'm just doing this on my own for now and most likely for a very long time unless we get bigger then you know I'll get an editor or whatever but for now I'm just doing this solo. I will say that I don't expect the channel to be consistent when it comes to projects just because of the researching. Researching takes me a flip ton of time. I love YouTube censorship. I gladly had the Invincible research pretty much done, and then I've started a tiny, tiny bit on the Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes, but there's still so much I gotta research for that, it's gonna be crazy. My next video plan is to have all my Spider-Man breakdowns into one video with me adjusting things like the first couple of breakdowns so I can have them in more of my editing style that I have now, and just tweak some things here and there. So basically, it will be the definitive way to watch the whole project, but I'm unsure if YouTube will allow me to do that with all the copyright stuff, so I'll just have to figure all that out. I apologize for the delays and I hope we have less of those and I'm shooting to be back on August 2nd so hopefully you guys are still watching. I'm so sorry to disappoint you guys. I am one man and I really am trying my best for you guys. Um, I'd recommend putting on notifications just so you don't forget and I will see you guys later. Peace guys.